Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I have got a video talking about my experience of A-level maths. Um, so I've already uploaded my psychology one of these, hopefully that was useful. This is the maths version. And as usual, I've got my notes on my phone so that I'm not forgetting to say anything. So if I'm looking down, that's what I'm doing. But I'm gonna just be talking through my background, my experience, like what you can expect from it, and the best ways I find to revise and how you can prepare over the summer. So just as a bit of a background, I just want to say that bef like before I start talking about anything, this is my own personal experience, everyone's will be different. I say this mostly for this video because our class was at a massive disadvantage throughout the year as we had three lessons a week at my school and we also had three teachers, so that meant we had one teacher per lesson once per week, which meant they were all teaching equally, they had equal responsibility for our class. And when there's no dominant teacher, nobody took responsibility for us as a whole. Yeah, our class was at a massive disadvantage and also like the way stuff was taught was very sporadic. So we'd have three different teachers teaching three different things at once and they didn't talk to each other that much. We kind of ended up being the ones who spoke between them. So yeah, it wasn't the best organised, which could explain some of the things I'm going to talk about in the video. But I do want to just talk about the course and stuff and like what you can expect out of it and like talk about the jump and stuff like that. So obviously just bear that in mind that I have not probably had the best experience that I could have done. Next year we're not having three teachers because I think it was just a timetabling issue and it was like a last resort. I am on the exam board at Excel which most people are on and in the summer between year 11 and year 12 it was a subject I was most worried about as I knew I was going to be doing history, geography and maybe psychology during the summer. I wasn't worried about any of them but I was worried about maths because both my parents had tried to put me off it and I've been told that it was hard so I was like Ugh. but I knew I always wanted to take it because it's always been something I can do um, although I'm not actually a mathematician it's always been like one of my stronger subjects so I always wanted to take it and I wasn't going to not take it so yeah I was kind of scared and I also got an A to my GCSE if that puts anything into context so I did work for it and I didn't just get by by being good at maths like no I would have probably got like a 6 or something or maybe a 7 had I not put in any work so and I do want to say out of the three subjects I'm taking now maths is by far my weakest um I got a B in my mock um but I like the to the individual grades I got were an E a B and an A so a real mix <laughs> Okay, so now I'm just going to talk to you guys about my experience, the jump between GCSE and A-level. Stuff that I've regretted, stuff you can expect to need to do and um, to happen to you. I've said at the beginning of the video, like, maths is a hard subject, like, so I do not want to sugarcoat it at all. I want you guys to know exactly how hard it is, but I don't want to put you off. Like, if you want to do maths, then do maths. If you're willing to put in the work, um, nothing should turn you off of it, unless you're, like, really, really bad at maths and maybe not the best subject for you I don't know so I think in the first few terms of maths I've been told maths was going to be really hard so I was expecting it all to hit me and to like be really bad at it all and really strong however there is a certain part of the course like the first like eighth of the book that's just GCSE overlap that you've done at GCSE but that's also in the A level so just like quadratic equations completing the square like thirds and stuff like that that stuff that you've just done at GCSE and that was like we just did that for like the first term and a half and it was relatively easy I did not notice a jump at all it was just the same content with a different teacher and a different teaching style and more work outside of school so the actual content wasn't harder and then there was the odd new topic that was introduced such as binomial expansion or algebraic division but they weren't hard and because all the other content was easy if you wanted to go away and work on it it wasn't difficult to do that like you could find time for it and once you start to get into the rhythm of sixth form that's when the content gets harder but you're already used to sixth form so it's less of a shock um that is what i found anyway um i don't know if some schools make you just revise the GCSE content over summer and start away with the A-level content but that's just what I did. It would have actually saved us a lot of time if we'd not wasted the beginning of year 12 doing GCSE content though now that I'm thinking about it because we're quite rushed for time um, but anyway so the jump isn't bad at all but around like November December time you started doing new topics and suddenly everything we were doing was new and also mechanics had been going along 
going on along with this and mechanics was new like the stuff wasn't hard but it was just getting our head around like doing physics-y stuff. None of us like mechanics at all. Around November, December time we started doing new content like differentiation, integration and I didn't get it at first. As I said, I'm not a natural mathematician so it doesn't click with me like it does with other people. I really have to go away and work on it and then once I've worked on it like I get it and that's that and I don't need to worry about it but until it clicks I'm a bit mm. so when the new topics came about it got progressively harder and each like lesson we were doing something new we weren't going back and revisiting old stuff we were building on the old stuff that we'd done before or doing something completely new so there wasn't time to not get it if I didn't get something I had to go home and learn it and I will talk about how you can like go away and independently learn stuff um, later in the video when I talk about revision but I think it's so important if you don't get something in maths to ask the question because there may be 30 other people in there who are also confused and I am lucky I'm like not the sort of person who speaks up in class but because our class is of seven people I can easily just say sir I don't get it and I don't even need to put my hand up and he'll explain it to me some people get annoyed with me but then I get better grades than them in the end because I ask the questions so if you do get confused by something it's essential you go away and make sure you understand it and that is something that I've not done during the year at all I've kind of just let it slide and I really regret that now because I was meant to do everything over the summer but my motivation has completely gone and I don't really want to do work over the summer but I know that I'm not gonna have time next year so I do need to do it this summer um so I think if you don't get something go and understand it there and then don't leave it till Christmas or the summer because you won't do it and I really need to do it and I haven't and I'm halfway through summer and I've got a whole year worth of maths to teach myself <laughs> and I do think although I'm saying it gets harder it does get harder but everyone finds it harder and people's grades do dip to what you usually get so people in my class um, I know for a fact that three of us got a grade 8 near a grade 9 and I think the rest of the people in my class got a 7 so like our class is not stupid we are all pretty good at maths and a lot of us I think the highest grades people get on big tests are about B's like I've got some B's and then on little tests I've had A's and stuff but our class is like a real mix like we have grades all the way from U's to A's um, but in our mocks nobody got above a B so and a lot of like half the class failed so just don't expect to be getting good grades immediately because it is hard and, um, but also know that if you want to improve it you do need to put in the work and it is hard because it's so different um, like I, I've never got an A star in maths before I don't think maybe once in like a test and I was it was a topic that I was good at so yeah it, it, it is hard and you can't expect to just be getting the same grades you used to get without putting in tons more work like I feel like everybody knows that but people don't appreciate it until they get there um, you do need to put in a lot more work so yeah that's sort of about my experience and how it gets harder and obviously it's hard but it's okay um, it's manageable and now I'm just going to talk about revision you can do how I revise um, the best ways to revise so I think the best thing you can do um, which you can do now is to buy yourself the textbook this is the edXL pure maths textbook for year one I also have the year two one if you want to buy that as well why not when you've got it um, so I've got those two textbooks there and then I've got year one and the year two um, statistics and mechanics books um, some schools do like pure and statistics or pure and mechanics but at my school we do pure and both of them um, so I don't really know how it works if we get taught less of each or something but we do both I'd really recommend picking up a textbook because it's useful in so many ways for revision you can make sure that you have covered everything and I actually next year I didn't do it this year because I didn't have the textbook which is why I'm telling you to get it but you can use the textbook to like organize your folder because the textbook splits it up into the sections and sometimes it's difficult to know what topic your work goes under so if you're arranging it around the textbook then it's just set out like that and you can use the exercises you do in class to know where the stuff goes if that makes sense I have organized my statistics folder using that method and it helped so much because then I know what I've covered what I've not covered what we're going to cover next and then it's really easy to go back and make sure that I have been taught everything and that I understand everything. Um, and if I don't understand anything or something, I can go into the bit of the textbook that I don't understand where the notes are missing. And I can look at the examples, I can do some exam questions. Textbook you should definitely get. I don't know if some schools give them out, but mine don't. And also, as I've said, you need to be prepared to put in the time into practice and prepare 
yourself to get really frustrated with some topics because it does happen to everybody and there's going to be some topics no matter how much time and effort you put in you still don't get it like your effort doesn't always translate to grades as shown by my statistics grade yeah you will get frustrated with stuff but there's always a way to understand it and learn it and i'm going to talk to you guys about that now the best way to revise is to practice so obviously you need to understand the content before you practice but once you understand it it will just go out of your head unless you practice it so much that you're sick of it i think the thing that i know best how to do is integration um, and that's because i did literally like 20 questions in a row in one of my frees um until i i was bored of it and i hated it but it was like very systematic and I knew exactly what to do so that is now one of my best topics if you just repetitively practice until you're bored of it until it's really easy and you don't have to think about it then that is probably the best way to get it in your head um obviously don't do that for every topic because it's not always necessary just for the things that you know you struggle with and one of the websites i love for when my teachers have taught me something and i've not got it and i don't want to go see them after school because that's awkward sometimes is exam solutions and i think i might have spoken about it before but it's basically a website and it's got a list of all the different things that you can learn and you can just go to the topic and click on the video, watch the video and the guy explains it and he speaks really slowly so you have to speed it up otherwise you'll go mad um, and he'll explain it and you watch the video and it makes loads of sense and then he's got a video on everything, um, everything in each topic and then you can go and do some exam questions and then he has a video explaining the an how to answer each exam question which I find really useful. As I said the textbook is great, get yourself some textbooks. Um, and I've also got a revision guide from CGP, I just thought I'm buying the textbooks, so I might as well buy this as well. Don't know if I need it, but it's quite good. So if I'm in school, I can just take this and then both years, statistics and mechanics and pure in one book. So it's a lot smaller, um, but it doesn't really explain stuff as well. So but it's still worth getting um, and it's got everything very concise in it. I've also got this workbook. If there's something you get, but you need like um, to practice questions, this is really good and it's got work solutions in the back. However, I have found a lot of the questions are really weird and confusing and I don't know if that's just because I didn't understand the topic, but. And obviously, as I've said, you need to be prepared to put in the work. If you're one of them people who at GCSE was just smart and managed to get like eights and nines without revising, you cannot do the A-level using that attitude still. Um, you need to put in the work because there's a lot of stuff that you learn and you learn it very quickly that you'll forget it if you're not putting in the work. Yeah, that is kind of my revision advice. Obviously, I've only done one year of A-levels. I'll probably do another video like this, but just the whole A-level in its entirety next year um, when I'm at uni, which is a bit scary. When I've got my results and stuff and I have properly worked out which ways to revise, but yeah, I think the revision process is quite similar to GCSE, just you've got to do a lot more of it. Now I'm just going to talk to you about how you can prepare over summer. If you've got summer homework, do that. That's your priority because that's what the school expects of you. Um, and I did this thing where I bought this textbook and it was like head start to GCSE maths. No head start to A-level maths and it had a bridge between GCSE and A-level but I didn't really do it and it wasn't very useful. I'd have been better to just jump straight into the A-level stuff because um, it's not actually as hard as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be so difficult and I'd need something to bridge it but you don't um, and a lot of people ask me about that book but like honestly I wouldn't bother getting it but I never really delved into it properly wasn't that useful. You'd just be better to buy the textbook and actually have a look at what you're going to be doing rather than like shying away from the fact that it's going to be hard. And there's also in the textbook, um, at the beginning of each chapter, they've got this prior knowledge check thing here. And this is just like GCSE stuff that you really should know to be able to do that chapter. So this is like trigonomic ratios. And it's just got like those of trig triangles and stuff there. Um, and then you can make sure you can do all of these. And then just have a look at the chapter and see what like it is, see what it's about, look at some of the examples, maybe even try some questions, just to sort of warm yourself up and see what it's like. And the first couple of questions of each chapter are really easy, so it would actually be quite good to do that, but obviously you don't have to, nobody's expecting that of you, so if you don't want to do that, that is fine. If you feel very underprepared and you want to do something to feel like you've prepared yourself then you can definitely do that and yeah that is essentially all like as I've said maths is not an easy subject and I don't want to sugarcoat it but it's definitely possible if you're willing to put in the work 
and I'm willing to like deal with the frustration um, and I will put a link to these books down below in the description if you would like to buy one and I'll also link this as well My I hope that was helpful if you have any questions about maths leave them down below I'll be sure to answer them if you've done maths or you're doing maths right now leave me some revision advice and any websites you recommend and that's about it I hope you guys have found this useful and I'll see you soon for a brand new video